Well, a good Sunday to you. Thanks for finding us here at Fox 26. I'm meteorologist John Dawson. This is our in-depth look at what's happening in the tropics. You know, sometimes there's not that much to talk about because we're here every day of hurricane season, season bringing you the latest in what's happening. And of course, when there's not much going on, sometimes we got to kind of stretch a little to figure out what to talk about, but plenty to talk about today. Glad you're here. Glad you want to keep updated. The good news is, as I begin to dive into things, is everything that we're talking about is far out in the Atlantic, so not an immediate threat. Certainly could be a threat, but we've got some days to keep an eye on things and watch how things are going to unfold. And this is the best time again to keep those preparations going, because here as we begin to get into the active parts of hurricane season, we just need to be ready because you never know what might be happening. So first of all, there are two areas of invest. One of them has a 20% chance of development into a tropical system, according to the National Hurricane Center in a seven day period. And the other one has a 90% chance of tropical development. So you can see that we've got one that's a little bit more favored than the other. So the one that's not so favored, this is gonna be Invest 96L. It's been sort of wandering and struggling and trying to hang in there, but it's just got too much dry air that's kind of wrapping around it, kind of choking it out a little bit, just not able to get itself going into a tropical system. And let me tell you, I'm not sad about that. I like it when the dry air invades and shuts things down in the tropics. That is, is not the case necessarily for what's happening with Invest 97L. Now, this is fairly new. This is a tropical wave that just came off of the coast of Africa. Again, so the, the idea here is this is way out in the Atlantic. This got a long way to go before it really starts interacting with any sort of land mass, especially for us folks here in the United States. So as we keep an eye on Invest 97L, it's fighting a little bit of dust, but the dust seems to be lingering a little bit stronger to the north. And as long as it can kind of remain a little further south in its latitude, it will be working with a little bit more tropical moisture and being able to get better organized. And, you know, the bigger and stronger it can get, the better it can kind of fight off some of that drier air and dust when it starts sort of working its way in there and can kind of last a little more, a little more stamina can't always win, but it certainly has that possibilities. And that's again, this is way early in the developments of what we're looking at here, but it just looks like things are really favored that this would turn into a tropical system. And again, you can see that here when we take a look at the the computer models, the, the famous spaghetti plot here, you can see where the models are expecting this system to go right along where the National Hurricane Center has shaded in the red. So again, the National Hurricane Center shades in this red area. This is the area in which they expect a system to form. So remember, just to clarify, this isn't an impact area. This isn't a forecast cone necessarily. It is kind of a forecast because this is where we expect it to be headed, this low pressure system. And it is obviously where the Hurricane Center says it might develop into a tropical system. That's over a seven day period. Now, over a two day period, so in the next 48 hours, they actually give it a 50% chance. So things are increasing as we move through. By the time we get to Tuesday or Wednesday, I really do think we're gonna be talking about a, a tropical system, at least a depression, maybe a tropical storm. And indications are this is headed on its way to be the first hurricane of the 2025 season. So we'll see that. There's not, again, not much to watch up here when we take a look at, at our GFS future cast. This is where Invest 96 is. 97 here, we're going to continue to watch. You see the little bit of a spin. You get the showers and the storms better organized. By the time we get to Thursday, I think we definitely have a tropical system, maybe even a hurricane once we get towards the end of the week. Indications start to show that it's a little bit stronger. So this is now Friday. Notice we're still more or less in the middle of the Atlantic. So this is quite a few days from now, and it still hasn't really picked an exact direction on where this is going to head, although it has certainly crept a little bit further to the north. And the GFS, you'll see at the very end there, starts to pull it a little bit further to the north. And partly that's because 
the GFS is on board with this becoming a fairly strong storm. So the stronger the storm, the more it likes to kind of veer to the north just a little bit. And so you can kind of see that here in this uh, sort of a future of what could happen when you have a weaker system. That weaker system is going to, first of all, not really want to pull to the north quite as much. It'll want to just sort of stay a little bit flatter, a little bit lower in latitude. And also the big sort of interaction, though, is this Bermuda high. This is a, a high pressure system that's that's floating over the Atlantic most of the time, and it is going to be something that always interacts with whatever's happening tro tropically speaking, and it kind of fluctuates. Sometimes it's stronger. It moves around in its position a little bit, but as it begins to set up, it has the possibility of helping to encourage a system to even pull to the north even more. Hurricanes are big, they're strong, they're ugly, but they always prefer the path of least resistance. They don't like to, or can't really just plow through the middle of a high pressure system like that. They're going to bounce and go around it, or they're going to get steered and kind of pulled by it a little bit. So that's what's possibly going to be the case. Now, this large Bermuda high is, like I said, one of these fairly permanent features. We do actually have some high pressure that's expected to be kind of floating around the east edges of the Gulf as well. So these systems will start to work together to help kind of steer things. One idea would be that it would a weaker storm would be steered further to the south and this would get pushed into the Caribbean and eventually maybe into the Gulf. Or if it's a stronger system and this high pressure, this high pressure kind of helps to pull it to the north, then it can kind of work in between those two high pressure ridges. So lots to still figure out, but again, we're thankful for the time to be able to work on that. This isn't going to be something that we're going to figure out over the next 48 hours. This is going to take multiple days to kind of really pull it together on what's happening here with what is now Invest 97L. We are definitely in seeing this increase in activity as the history books show us. September the 10th is the peak of hurricane season. We're on our way there. Doesn't mean that we couldn't see something not in the active portions. We know how that works, but we're just definitely sticking with the record books uh, or the history books so far this season. Next name on the list, we're sort of progressing about like we'd expect to. It, we've done four named storms, all of those tropical storms. I think Aaron is definitely what 97L is going to end up turning into. And at this point, I feel confident that it will be a hurricane as well. Where we're going with this, that's what I don't have the confidence in. But I do think by the end of the week, we're going to be talking about Hurricane Aaron. And we'll see how quickly we kind of race to that. But we'll be here every day of hurricanes, every day of hurricane season, keeping you updated. So make sure you're checking back. However you're checking back, maybe you're on Fox Local video on demand there, or maybe you're on fox26houston.com, or my favorite is the Fox 26 YouTube channel. It's so easy to access that. Check that out if you get the chance. While you're on YouTube, roll on over to my page, which is meteorologist John Dawson, or you can search for hurricane gear test in the YouTube search bar, either of those. That will get you to some preparedness videos that I work on regularly about different items that you might include in your hurricane preparedness items. Again, that's the hurricane gear test. Meteorologist John Dawson, that's how you find it on YouTube. Give you some ideas to kind of keep prepared. Remember, now is the time to keep those preparations ready as things are quiet here across the U.S. right now, and we'll see how things unfold. All right, that'll do it for today. We'll be sure and make, make sure to see you again tomorrow.